All of the music for today's Mass can be found in your online worship aid. Please join me in singing the gathering song, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. As we celebrate the last day of the Easter octave, or the second Sunday of Easter, also known as Sunday of Divine Mercy. Let's begin together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My friends, as we will hear in the Gospel story today, St. Thomas believed that Jesus rose from the dead because he saw and touched the risen Lord. We have not seen or touched the risen Lord ourselves like the apostles. However, because of the gift of our faith, we can discern the presence of the risen Lord in one another, in our fellow brothers and sisters, and certainly in the consecrated bread and wine of the Eucharist. So let's begin by acknowledging our own doubts, our own human weakness, our own sinfulness, and turn to the Lord who is full of mercy. sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may be able to grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the Apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading is a reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet, which said, write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks 
and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. My friends, we live in a world today that has so many doubts. Some of the doubts in our neck of the woods are familiar, they're perennial. It seems every year we have doubts about the Red Sox returning to the World Series and the Bruins winning another Stanley Cup and the Celtics hoisting another banner at the Garden and recently the Patriots ever getting back to the Super Bowl. And most years, we have doubts whether we're actually going to have a decent spring before summer arrives for good. The last few years, we've all been struggling mightily. We've had nagging doubts that our country will ever get back to normal after this deadly virus finally goes away. And we definitely have our doubts that the nasty discourse that dominates our politics will ever get more civil and bear more fruit for the common good of our nation. There are now, again, serious doubts about how the people of Ukraine can survive the brutal attack on their nation. More than a few people even have doubts about the existence of God or about the extent of God's mercy for sinners and for those in any kind of need. In today's world, we are beset by so many doubts. Well, friends, the patron saint of doubters is featured in today's gospel. At first, Thomas refused to believe that Jesus had really risen from the dead. He was missing in action when the risen Christ first appeared to his fellow disciples. Thomas had serious doubts about their testimony that they had seen the risen Lord. He just chalked it up to wishful thinking, on their part, or what some today might call fake news. Thomas just could not believe in Jesus' resurrection. He knew that Jesus had been crucified and buried. End of story. So how in the world could he possibly be risen? How could he suddenly be alive again? So Thomas balked and objected, and he stubbornly insisted on actually seeing and touching the nail marks in Jesus' hands and the spear marks in his side 
before letting go of his doubts. So, Jesus obliged. Jesus reappeared to the disciples, and this time Thomas was with them. And Jesus provided Thomas with all the evidence he needed to resolve his doubts. And as a result, at the end of this gospel story, doubting Thomas becomes Thomas the Apostle for good. And he speaks powerful words of faith to the risen Savior, my Lord and my God. My friends, to have doubts is part of being human. There's nothing wrong with having reasonable doubts about people, about situations, even about the unfolding plan of God in our lives. But we never want our doubts to harden into cynicism or morph into despair or slip into unbelief. Because frankly, faith is our lifeline. Faith is our life saver, especially in times of hardship. The truth is, like Thomas, we all need to see or hear or touch or learn some evidence in order to believe, if just the testimony of another person we trust or the word of another disciple in whom we can place our hope. If you've ever had a doubt about God's merciful love for you, a mystic named St. Faustina Kowalska, a Polish nun in the 1930s, has a testimony for you to ponder this weekend. And her evidence comes from a series of visions, private revelations she had of Jesus himself. And in all these mystical visions, Jesus invited everyone, even the most hardened sinner, to trust in him because he is divine mercy in person. In one of those visions, Jesus said to St. Faustina, there is no human misery that could be a match for my mercy. The soul that trusts in my mercy is fortunate because I myself will take care of it. The words of Jesus to St. Faustina. My friends, this is the mercy that Jesus once extended to Thomas to heal his stubborn unbelief and turn his doubts into an unparalleled expression of faith. This is the mercy Jesus wants to extend to all of us, anyone and everyone who seeks it, including those who are trapped in fear and anxiety because of this pandemic. Well, my friends, today, this weekend, is Divine Mercy Sunday, a day in which the church gives us a golden opportunity to acknowledge our lack of faith sometimes, our struggle to trust Jesus, and the burden of our human weakness and sins, whatever they may be. And in turn, is a day to receive the Lord's mercy in abundance. Today we can rejoice in Thomas's conversion and we can pray for our deeper conversion. That with the grace of the risen Lord, our misery would find relief, our worries would be eased, our sins would be forgiven, and our trust in God would be strengthened. On Divine Mercy Sunday, let's heed the prayerful advice of another famous mystic, 
Saint Teresa of Avila, who wrote the following words. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things are passing. God never changes. Whoever has God lacks nothing. God alone suffices. Trusting in the mercy of our God, let's profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers before the merciful Lord, trusting in the one who raised Jesus from the dead. For the church, that we may boldly proclaim our faith in the risen Christ to those like Thomas who have not seen and are reluctant to believe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Lord's gift of peace of, to his disciples may inspire us to pursue peace as an alternative to war conflict, and discord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in need of our prayers, for those who are homebound or suffering from chronic illness, for those impaired by addiction, for all who are close to death, and for those who suffer alone, that they may be comforted by their faith and by those they love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, that we may be instruments of God's mercy, bringing forgiveness and reconciliation to those who have turned away. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. For those whom we promise to pray, for those who have no one to pray for them by name, and for the intentions of those remembered in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of John Hallam, Elizabeth M. Fisher, Anthony Di Natale, Mary Rogers, Jerome Gouda, 
for whom this Mass is offered, for all our beloved dead, and for all our own intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for an end to violence in all forms throughout the world, especially in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Join me, please, in this prayer during the year of the family. Heavenly Father, we praise you for creating us to know, love, and serve you through the daily life of our family. We give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Family as our model for love and faithfulness in good and bad times. Help us to discover how our family can be a light of hope and joy for the world. Send your Holy Spirit to open our ears to hear your call to serve and respond yes like Mary to remove doubt from our minds and work for the good of others, like Joseph, and to strengthen our hearts and continue to turn to you in prayer, like Jesus. We ask this in your holy name. Amen.
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. A few brief announcements as we conclude Mass today. Thank you so much to all those who have contributed thus far to this year's Catholic Appeal, which supports 50-plus central ministries in eastern Massachusetts run by the Catholic Church. As of April 18th, our parish, Ave Maria Parish, has pledged over $55,000 toward our goal, our assessment actually, of $59,000 plus. That's 93% of our assessment. Uh, a remarkable performance by our parish thus far. Let's keep going. The more we go over our assessment, the more we will receive as a rebate for our efforts. If you haven't had a chance to contribute to this year's Catholic Appeal, please do so. Every gift matters and will help us to reach or surpass our assessment. As always, thank you so much for your continued financial support to Ave Maria Parish. And this weekend, we have a Divine Mercy uh, prayer service, 2.30 at Our Lady of the Assumption Church. Please join us. And I wish all of you peace and joy, good health in the coming week. Blessings to all of you as we continue our Easter journey. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. As we go forth, please join me in singing, Alleluia, Love is Alive. <laughs>